Okay, welcome back. Now the problem I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a follow-up problem to the method of images that I taught you. This is called force and energy of two-point charges at an uncharged plane. So let's assume that we have a large uncharged plane. We can call it infinitely large, right? Then we have a charge Q and negative Q in front of the plane, right? And then we have a distance D, D, and imagine their distance between each other is also D. We can ask a bunch of questions about this situation. We can say the, the negative Q, uh, the negative Q induces a positive charge on the plane distributed throughout the charge, right? So this is going to be positive here at the center, then moving away it's going to be positive, positive, but the Q induces a negative charge, right? So as it moves outward it's less and less negative, as this one moves outward it's less and less positive. So overall there's this complicated charge induced on that plane due to the negative Q and the Q, right? But how can we mimic this situation again, the method of images, right? Okay, how can we utilize that? Well, since this is an infinite plane, the electrical field here is gonna be more or less straight again. It's gonna look like this. Uh, Q, it's gonna go like this, like this, and it's gonna come in straight perpendicular to the uh, plane, right? And then from here, it's gonna go like this. Uh, from outside of, right, it's gonna go from the positive charge to the negative charge, right? So since we're assuming that this plane is very large, we're never sort of at the edges of it, right? The, uh, the electrical field will always be coming out perpendicular from the surface, right? And then over here, it's gonna go perpendicularly in, into the surface. Then from here, it's gonna go like this, right? It's gonna go like this, and then like that, right? And then it's gonna go like this, and then so on, right? So how can we mimic this situation with the method of images? Well, what we'll do is we'll put here negative Q, we'll put here a, another charge on the opposite end, right? The distance 2D away, right? Where the electrical field looks like this, right? And it is pretty much horizontal in the middle, right? Just like it is horizontal here. So we're putting another if in the, behind the plane, we're putting another charge opposite to that, plus Q, and then behind this plane, we're putting another charge negative Q, right? So then if this is uh, Q, now we can ask all kinds of questions about that situation. We can say, what is the force on one of the charges, right, the negative Q, due to the Q and the plane, right? Well, it would be the same as the force on one of the charges due to this charge and due to the other two charges, right? We can say, what's the total potential energy of the system? So it'll be the same as finding the total potential energy of this system, right? We can say, what's the total electrical field in the middle of the plane created by these two charges, right? What's the total electrical field created here? Well, it'd be the same thing as asking, what's the total electrical field created right here in the center? So we can ask any question. What's the total potential here? created by all four charges. We can say, what's the total electrical field created at the, at the center between the two middles, now between the two charges, right? It'd be like asking, what's the total electrical field created here, okay? So let's do some of those problems, but you can kind of see the idea behind that. Once you got an appropriate image that mimics that situation, you can ask any question on that. So what would be the total potential energy of the system, right? So then it'll be K, it'll be Q and negative Q over 2D plus then it'll be, uh, then the charge Q has another potential energy with that, K, Q, negative Q over D, then you have a potential energy with this and this, K, Q, uh, Q over, then this distance is going to be what? Uh, square root of uh, 4 plus 1, 5d squared, which is square root of 5d over square root of 5d. So this one is the potential energy of this one with this one. This one is the potential energy of this one with this one. This one is the potential energy of this one with this one. And then I need to add the potential energy of uh, this one with this one, right? K negative q, q over d. Then I need to add the potential energy of this one with this one. K negative Q, negative Q over square root of 5D. Then you have the potential energy of these two, right? 
k negative q q over 2d. All right? So then you just basically add up all that. So the potential energy is going to be negative, uh, that's going to be negative 3kq squared, negative 5kq squared, negative 6. Negative 6kq squared over 2d plus 2kq squared over square root of 5d. All right? Then this one goes into here three times. So then you have here kq squared over d, right? So then you have here um, negative 3, negative 3 plus, then you're going to have here 2 over square root of 5, okay? So negative 3 plus 2 over square root of 5, then you multiply that by kq squared over d. So this number is larger than that. So that means together the, the total potential energy of the system is negative. So if you have a, ne a dipole, a negative q and a q, next to an infinite plane, they will both induce a positive charge and a negative charge, right? Uh, so what's going to happen? The total induced charge on that plane is going to be zero because this guy is going to induce a Q, this guy is going to induce a negative Q, the total induced charge is going to be zero, the total potential energy of the system is going to be this complicated equation, KQ squared over D, negative 3 plus 2 radical 5. Notice if you didn't have the infinite plane, what would happen? Then the potential energy of negative Q and Q would have been what? Uh, it would have just been uh, negative kq squared over d, right? Uh, so the potential energy is now larger or uh, less? So let's compare. This is the potential energy of a dipole without an infinite plane, whereas this is the potential energy of a dipole next to an infinitely conducting uncharged plane, right? So what is that equal to? So this is going to be uh, 3 negative plus 2 divided by 5 radical. So this is going to be negative 2kq. Uh, it's about negative 2.1kq squared over d. So it's larger, in other words, it's more negative of a potential energy, right, than if it was just a dipole. In other words, if we wanted to separate the negative Q and Q, if we wanted to separate them and separate the plane from them, all three of them infinitely away, how much work would we have to put in? We would have to put in 2.1 kq squared over the amount of work. This one, how much work would we have to put to just separate the dipole from each other? We would have to put kq squared over D. So it would, it would be easier to separate just two uh, opposite charges from each other versus two opposite charges that are inducing opposite charges on a conducting plane, right? Because there's more attraction going on here. That pretty much makes sense. This one is attracting this, this one is attracting this. So since there's more attraction, it's harder to separate them. So the answer definitely does make sense, okay? So if we wanted to answer any other question, like what is the total electrical field created at the midpoint? We could answer that too, right? Right. If I wanted to find the total electrical field here, if I didn't have the plane, what would be the total electrical field at the midpoint? This one would create an electrical field towards it. This one would create an electrical field away from it. So the total electrical field will be only in the y direction, right? And it would equal kq over d over 2 squared plus kq over d over 2 squared so 4kq over d squared plus 4kq over d squared. So the total electrical field will be 8kq over d squared. And it'll be in the y direction, right? But because you have the plane, which has uh, pos some positive charge here and then some negative charge here, what's the total electrical field here? Well, the negative charge is going to produce a certain electrical field this way. The positive charge is going to create a certain electrical field this way, right? Plus, you still have these two, so uh, these two will be have the effect of electrical field like this. So that's going to kind of reduce the electrical field, right? It's not going to be as large as this value. So how do we find that? Well, we say this one creates an electrical field this way, this one creates an electrical field this way, which is equal to 8kq over d squared. 
This one creates an electrical field this way. This one creates an electrical field this way, right? Their X components cancel and only their Y components uh, add up, right? So all I need to do is find the Y component of one of them and double it because they're symmetric. So the Y component of this one, and then if you double it, that's gonna equal to the Y component of this one, right? So let's just find one of them. What's the electrical field here? of one of them, E1. So that's gonna be KQ over this distance squared. So this is 2D, this is half a D. So this is gonna be square root of 4D squared plus 1 fourth D squared, okay? So that's gonna be square root of, that's gonna be what? Um, uh, 16, 17 fourths D, right? So that's gonna be square root of 17d divided by two, right? So then the electric field is gonna be kq over this distance squared. So 17 uh, over four d squared, right? So you're, since we have to square the distance, right? So that's gonna be 17 over four d squared. So it's gonna be four kq over d, um, over 17, 4kq over 17d squared. But then I'm gonna take the y component of that. So if this is theta, this is theta, right? So then I have to take what? I have to take e sine of theta because that's this component, right? e sine of theta, so then I'm gonna say this time sine of theta. So what is sine of theta gonna be? Half d divided by square root of 17 over 2d, right? So e sine of theta, four kq over 17 d squared times uh, half a d divided by square root of 17 over 2d. And then DD cancels, 2, 2 cancels. So then you're dividing this by what? Uh, 4KQ over 17, root 17 D squared. That's the electrical field in the Y direction, right? But I'm gonna double that because this one is also gonna have a similar electrical field. So 2EY, so that's gonna be 8. 8KQ over 17, root 17 D squared, right? So this one is gonna be down in the negative y direction, then I'm gonna subtract that from this, right? This is the electrical field that would have occurred only if you had the negative q and the q. So subtract this result from there, that tells you the total electrical field in the midpoint between the charges, right? So then you're gonna have here, E total is gonna be 8kq over d squared minus 8kq over 17 root 17 d squared okay so you can see definitely this is a larger number because this one has the extra 17 root 17 so the total electrical field we can factor out 8kq over d squared 1 minus 1 over 17 root 17 and then we can uh, Evaluate that or we could just leave it like that. That'll be the total electrical field at the midpoint So now we can ask any other kinds of questions about it We can say what's the total electric field at the midpoint here? What's the force on one of the charges? And then once you have the method of images the negative Q Q Q negative Q Then you can answer any other question based on that right in the future I'll show you some other examples where the method of images can be very useful in solving problems. Okay. Thank you very much